What is a subtle sign that someone is really intelligent? ITT, people who don't understand the difference between intelligence and social skills. They draw wisdom from multiple sources. Wait but that might be more wise than intelligent. But I guess those two tend to be seen together a lot. They can switch up the way they talk to match the person they're talking to without sounding condescending. They listen to how others learn and explain it in that person's language of understanding. Talking to people as if they're intelligent at their level and without being condescending or even letting on that it's lower than their level. I used to work with a doctor, Tom Howard, and the day I realized he was a genius was the time he guessed every single condition a patient of mine had based on minute pieces of information about him. They are curious about everything. To be intelligent you need to be knowledgeable and you can't be knowledgeable if you are never curious. When they explain something they make you feel intelligent. They spend time thinking before asking a question. They effortlessly communicate complex concepts in a simple way. They know when their knowledge ends and say something to the extent of, I don't know and anything else I say on this topic is ignorant speculation. Explaining something complex is simple terms. Knowledge is so vast that they can talk about in the easiest way for someone else to understand. They can ask really good questions edit. To anyone not understanding what mean, I'm talking about people who ask really good questions, not just any questions, really good ones. I don't know how one would achieve this skill, I know I haven't. Edit 2, since this comment is getting a lot of attention I'd like to say, don't forget to drink your Ovaltine. They aren't afraid to say they don't know the answer to a question. They can follow the plot of Kingdom Hearts without needing any line graphs or charts. They apply knowledge from one realm into a new and relevant situation. For instance one person described a situation, might have been on Reddit, where they were a new assistant in an academic research lab and fixed a snag that stumped all the senior researchers including the professor. The team was trying to video record their project using a strobe light and their footage wasn't working as planned. When no one else made progress at diagnosing or solving the problem, the most junior individual spoke up and suggested that the strobe could be out of phase. They remembered that video typically records at a rate of 24 frames a tilde tilde minute tilde tilde second, thanks for the correction, and explained that along with suggesting a change to the strobe's flash rate so it would coincide with the recording. This worked and it really raised up that individual's reputation within the group. Inwardly they were almost embarrassed about the source of this knowledge. They had a gaming hobby back in high school, and had taken some video footage of that, and discovered the standard frame rate while playing around in editing software. But they remembered that detail years later and realized it made a difference in a completely different context. That is intelligence. They can genuinely consider an idea which opposes their worldview without necessarily accepting it. They admit to changing their mind about something. People who use analogies to explain concepts to others. It's a form of code switching and integrating concepts on the fly is a clear indicator someone is both socially and conceptually intelligent. Edit. As many have pointed out, not all analogies are helpful or make sense to others. So a useful analogy that creates an aha moment for someone is a wonderful thing. An analogy is an association. A mental process of connecting an idea or thing to a relatable image for someone who can then see and digest the initial representation. Not using analogies doesn't mean someone can't be intelligent. And social intelligence doesn't mean social ease and charisma. It means an awareness that one's own understanding and experience often has to be translated in ways that others can relate to. I think intelligent people are more willing to calmly debate, discuss, rather than argue. Like, you explain to them why you disagree, and they listen to you and ask further questions about your viewpoint before offering a different perspective, as opposed to an unintelligent person, who would just resort to insults when other people disagree with them. Humor. I think that truly funny people are often very smart and cognizant of the different ways an idea can be humorous on several levels. They also know their audience. I think the difference between say a Jeff Foxworthy and a Dave Chappell and a Bo Burnham is their audience and their interests. Admitting when they're wrong and being willing to learn from mistakes. They say they love learning and they learn something new every day. Then they listen more than talk. They're logical, and they find out more information rather than believing something right away. There is also this lovely thing I like to call intelligence by association. I am a prime example of this.
my small rural town seems to think I'm a genius simply because I can read at a level above your average fourth grader, when in fact I'm a high-functioning moron. People who are genuinely curious about the world, ask questions, and listen to others instead of just waiting for their turn to talk. Also they don't view education as just a means to get a job. You shouldn't ask Reddit about intelligence. They don't open up threads like these hoping to find comments that fit how they see themselves. Yeah I see you looking through these comments. Dynamism and creativity. I really don't agree with that old notion of an intelligent person, as someone with social difficulties who's good at logical thinking. This is just one single possibility, among dozens of others. They solve math problems left on the board at MIT and they're only a janitor. Curiosity. Pursuing things they want to know for about and just having an interest in things. They listen really well, and seek to understand when they listen. They understand what you're saying before you're even done with your explanation. You can honestly just tell by the vibes. The way they compose themselves, talk, write, think, explain, etc. What I find the most interesting is that intelligent people, in my experience, are more likely to be less cold, fact-driven and more theoretical and creative. For example, if an intelligent person were to read a certain stat, fact, idea, etc., they are likely to have very interesting theoretical extrapolations. My friend qualified for the Mensa membership, and whenever we talk, his mindset always strays towards very interesting outlooks. He has certain ideas that I would never have even thought about. It's actually very fun to talk to intelligent people. The way they are able to absorb information like a sponge and apply that information is very eye-opening. A lot of these responses seem more about self-confidence. Admit you're wrong, confidence. Admit you don't know something, confidence. Change your opinion when presented with new information. Confidence with a dash of intelligence. Intelligence indicators IMO. The ability to quickly grasp and apply new concepts is a huge indicator. The ability to clearly communicate concepts across specialties, huge education or experience gaps. Using generic problem-solving skills on new and unfamiliar problems without prior knowledge of the space. Active eyes, but not in an I'm tweaking right now way. This is more of a hit or miss one, but in casual conversation they're good at puns, wordplay. Making good puns, especially spontaneously, requires a high level of understanding in whatever language is being spoken. If they tell you a pre-constructed joke that has a punchline that is a pun, a punchline if you will, you can't really tell, because they could have had a lot of time to come up with it, like me for instance, or they could have memorized it from somewhere, but spontaneous puns generally mean they're processing your conversation multiple interpretations at once, in an intelligent way. They can fill in the blanks and skip steps. People who get excited when they're wrong. Like, smart people get disappointed too especially if their misunderstandings are the cause of larger problems, but there's also a kind of underlying excitement of, wait, whoa, this works different than I thought. Interesting. Their curiosity and urge for learning. Great sense of spatial awareness at grocery store. As an English teacher, I'm probably biased, so take my opinion for what it is. That said, I can often identify a brilliant student by the way s, he uses written language. It's hard to explain. It's not just vocabulary, and it's not the concepts communicated in the writing, it's the fullness and maturity of the writer's voice, which encompasses the aforementioned and then some. The piece of writing often sounds like it could not possibly have been authored by the student. They hear more than they talk and usually know all the answers for your questions. Someone who knows, they know nothing at all. Intelligent people often go against the trends and immediately point out when something doesn't make sense even if it's supported by a large crowd of people. They often read things they disagree with in order to challenge themselves. They completely align with my political views. S. You see them trying to learn from other people. Always tries to see the bigger picture, considers multiple perspectives in the story, not overcompensating with flowery words in their speech, can explain a point concisely. At the grocery store usually between customers a till person will poke at the bags or wipe the belt, or whatever to look busy. There's a young girl at our local store who busies herself as usual, except sometimes she will look around at customers. Not open mouthed thousand yard stare, but actually looking at customers, she was watching them, studying them. 
I spent almost 20 years in security, and the way she studied customers was exactly the way I did it. I thought it was very interesting. I shared it with my wife, who's a teacher, who told me she's actually one of the smartest students in the school. I knew it. To be able to shift perspective and scope of a problem with ease. For instance, if discussing economic issues to understand the ramifications that a policy would have on people who aren't you, aren't just poor, rich, urban, suburban, educated, ignorant etc. Then, to understand how those audiences would accept or reject those policies. Everyone has opinions, but few people consider that to realizing those opinions into reality have consequences and even fewer are willing to articulate what consequences they are willing to accept or reject. In simple words, it's just thinking it through, but I find this separates those who engage with topics from those who just wish for magical ponies while be asterisk asterisking about problems. They ask questions and spend more time listening than talking. Laughing at a joke a second before the rest of the audience does. Everyone wants to be on their team when playing Trivial Pursuit. Using PPE properly. I work in an auto shop, and the smart guys use goggles and earplugs when necessary. The dummies don't, and have substantial hearing loss. They surround themselves with those who are more intelligent than they are. If you're the smartest person in a room, you know damn well to find a better room. One of the first cues for me is when someone speaks rather quickly but pauses, backtracks in the middle of a sentence to think about what they're saying. When they learn things their own way. Highly inefficient at accomplishing anything because they're enamored by everything. Like little moths flapping towards flickering candles in the distance. Honestly I don't think there is one thing. Being intelligent in one field usually means you also lack in another. Just because I can do calculus with ease doesn't mean I'm intelligent socially. I think a subtle sign would be someone who does brainstorming for any situation though, taking into effect both sides or positives, negatives. It, it depends on the definition. My husband has rebuilt cars, knows what every sound in a car, truck or motorcycle probably means and what needs to be done to fix it. Some issues he knows how to fix. Some issues he leaves with experts. He knows his limitations. That's intelligent right there. He also knows building codes and can do pretty much anything in our home, including electrical, plumbing and structural codes. Everything is up to code, in the house he bought a year before we met. He's built three computers since I met him six years ago, including the one I'm currently using. He understands RAM and ROM and all sorts of other terms that I can't keep in my head, that are computer related. He knows exactly what's needed to make the computer work properly and how to get the most out of every machine. His friends call him for advice about anything they want to fix or change in their homes, as he knows the answers and can explain it to them in a way that they can understand. If they're working on a project, he'll drop everything, especially if he thinks they're in over their head, to help them. There are a few things he can't do, like painting so he hires people for those things. He can't spell worth a damn. Not even his siblings' names. Whenever he's using a computer, I often get called into whatever room he's in, just to spell a word or two and or to help him find something on whatever page he's trying to read on the computer. O-T-O-H, I can spell. That's my superpower. I can also knit, embroider and crotchet, but haven't in years. I'd have to say of the two of us, he's the intelligent one. Because of how he looks and acts, people underestimate him all the time, until they get to know him. There's really not much he can't do, and do well, including cooking. If you like the video, please consider subscribing and liking. Any feedback in the comments would be greatly appreciated so that we can make these videos even better. Thanks for watching Upvote Stories.